You notice anything different about me? Hmm. Hmm. I ain't perfect. I'm just working on myself for the week. This is me. It's your girl Andy Reeves. Thank you so much for stopping in and checking out another one of my videos. If you haven't already, go ahead and click on that subscription button below. That way you can become a part of the Andy Army. And if you're already a part of Andy Army, go ahead and click on that bell icon below so that you can get notifications each time that I upload. That way you never miss a single moment of all things Andy. Back in June, I actually celebrated five years of being natural, but I realized that my hair was so damage. I had been straightening my hair for a little bit and it caused a lot of heat damage and also from the blow dryer. So I just decided to start over. Like it's just hair, it'll grow back. I mostly wear braids and plaits. Anyway, I figured that this time around it'd be a lot easier for me to do all of this because I have the right products and I know exactly how my hair behaves. I made a lot of mistakes my first time around, i.e. not using heat protectant. You know, you live and you learn. I'm doing my big chop round two right now and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my hair journey and how I got here. When I was younger, I had the most beautiful curls. Oh my God, I was in love with my hair when I was little. My mom and my sister kept my hair done, always in these like really intricate styles, these braids and plaits. I always had to have one braid hanging in front of my head, like how I have my curls hanging right now. I've always needed to have, you know, the bang yang, essentially. Not the bang yang, the bang yang. So most of the time I just went to school with my straight up fro and it wasn't a big deal until I was about 12 years old and I was going to predominantly white schools and I had these three bullies, these three girls, like always found a way to really irk me off during the day. One day they sat behind me in my English class and balled up little pieces of gum inflicted into the back of my fro. I didn't realize it until I got on the bus and somebody pointed it out to me and they helped me get it out via scissors. Thankfully, the gum didn't penetrate my fro. It was just like the ends of it. So um, we went in and we just snipped some of the pieces out. It wasn't a big deal. But there's a happy ending to that story because my mom actually gave me permission to beat one of their asses on the last day of school. So once I started to realize that there was something different about my hair, I started getting very insecure and wanting straight hair, but I was 12 and my mom was like, I'm not relaxing your hair, you're too young. Uh, so when I was 14, I had came back from a trip over the summer where I just kept straightening my hair. Like the people I was living with did not care what I did with my hair. So I just straightened it all the time. No heat protectant, nobody telling me how to actually do it. This was back in the day when like Hillary Duff's like crimp style was in and stuff. So I used to do that in my, who to like. I really damaged my hair that summer. So when I came home and my mama saw what I did to my hair, one, she wanted to beat my ass. She was so mad when I wet my hair, it did not curl up anymore. She was very livid. Me and my mom have pretty much identical hair texture. So she knew immediately that there was something wrong. And um, she made me wet my hair and it didn't curl. And she's like, all right, now it's time to give you a relaxer because you've damaged your hair. So she ended up relaxing it and cutting it for me and that's how I started my high school years. High school is when I was really trying to be white. Like I went to another predominantly white high school trying to fit in, straightening my hair every day. People could smell me coming because my hair was so burnt. Most of the time I smelled like burnt hair and Garnier Fructis because that's what I was putting on my hair because that's what the white girls is putting on their hair. Oh my God. So I had this like terrible bob thing that like didn't stay straight, which is why I was using the Garnier Fruit Tees to like slick it down. I looked a hot mess. I looked like my mama didn't love me even though she did everything that she could to make my hair look good. That's when I really stopped getting plaits and braids because they were seen as like ghetto or whatever. So I stopped letting my sister do my hair and I just focused on keeping it straight, getting it relaxed every two months or so. From 14 to about 22, that was my every two month routine. I even started paying the Dominicans 50 bucks to relax and wrap my hair. I really did think that if I kept my hair straight, I'd fit in, I wouldn't be treated any differently than the white kids were treating each other, and that I would be seen as having a proximity to whiteness without necessarily being white. Um, but obviously that's not how things go, and I ended up looking a damn fool for almost 10 years. So at 22, 
that's when everything changed for me. That's when I started being extremely proud to be black. I really embraced my roots, my heritage, my culture. This was right after Michael Brown was shot and killed and I started protesting with Black Lives Matter. I had a predominantly white friend group at the time who were so anti-Black Lives Matter. They thought it was like a hate group. One of my friends even told me that the reason why she didn't care about it was because it didn't affect her, because she doesn't have any black siblings. But I, and I told her, I was like, but I'm black. I'm your best friend and I'm black. And I'm telling you that I'm hurting. She just didn't care. So in that moment, I realized like, I didn't want to have to make white people feel comfortable to be around me anymore. I was over it. So I cut all of my hair off and started anew and went natural and decided that from then on out, I was only going to focus on having natural hair. So when I cut my hair off, I didn't cry at all. It was very liberating, honestly. I felt like I was cutting off years of trying to fit in and trying to make white people feel comfortable around me. And I didn't even care anymore. I cut it all off, baby. Then I went to the barbershop and that's when I started crying because he cut even more of it off. Ever since then I've fully embraced who I am as a black woman and I'm very proud of who I am and, and what it means to be a black woman. But anyways, that started my natural hair journey and boy was that a doozy. This was back in 2015. A lot of people were just starting their natural hair journey. There wasn't a lot of information out there available to everybody about certain products and about what to do. So I started watching YouTube videos, trying to find people who were my hair twin and whatnot. I ran across natural. I took a couple tips from her. I was doing everything that I possibly could do to learn about my hair, but at the same time, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I mostly kept it in protective styles and if you know anything about protective styling is that it can really damage your hair if it's not done right uh, so you can't just keep throwing your hair into braids and plaits and twists and hope that it'll grow healthy no you actually have to take time to get to know and love your curls but you know I ain't know nothing about all that so I just kept doing what I knew what to do and that was throwing them into braids plaits and twists so my edges were going because people who were, who were braiding my hair were braiding down my baby hair as well my hair became very thin very very thin um, because of how tight the braids were so for about five years that's all I did to my hair I'm just gonna compare it to how I was getting relaxers all the time every other month I was getting these protective styles done to my hair just because I didn't want to be bothered with my natural hair I just wanted it out of my face and just out of my life for a month or six weeks however long I decided to leave my hair and talking to my mom I realized because like I said me and my mom are identical hair twins talking to her I realized that I was leaving my protective styles and way too long I need to focus on protein treatments on my hair. I need to focus on deep conditioning my hair once a week. My hair grows very fast, so I need to be going and getting trims very frequently. Talking to my mom about my hair really changed my perception of it and it gave me a lot of advice that I wasn't necessarily finding online because even though you watch videos of other people doing stuff to their hair, it doesn't mean that your hair is going to turn out exactly the way that their hair turns out or that the products that they use are good for your hair either. I'll show you my basics. So when I wash my hair, this is the shampoo I use, The Green Supreme by Carol's Daughter. It is amazing and it's sulfate free, so you don't have all those chemicals just floating up in your hair. And then I use the Aussie Moist as my conditioner. And I make sure that I leave this in for at least three minutes before rinsing it out. And it leaves my hair very slick, very smooth, and very easy to detangle. My mama told me that I need to be using a protein deep conditioning treatment. She makes her own, but I've been using the Shea Moisture Hydrate Repair Protein Power Treatment and it has worked wonders. I'm a big fan of it. I'm definitely gonna be using this for a long time. For styling, I use the Melanin Multi-Use Softening Leave-In Conditioner. It's absolutely phenomenal how soft your curls are after using this. I found that the Olive Oil Eco Style Gel works best in my hair. It's not flaky and it's not too hard, but like my style right now, I use the Eco Style and you can tell that my curls are very defined and very well formed. So those are my basics. And then when I refresh my hair in the morning, I like to use this Green Supreme Leave-In Tonic to get it moisturized. And then I like to go in with some Olive 
olive oil wrap and set mousse. These are my three curl secret weapons. My Afro pick, my Denman brush, and this microwavable heating cap that I use when I deep condition my hair. It shortens my deep conditioning process uh, to about 30 minutes. You pop this bad boy in the microwave for like 60 seconds and it's pretty much the equivalent to sitting underneath a hair dryer for an hour. It's perfect. This time around, I'm promising myself that I'm actually going to take care of my hair and love my locks and moisturize them often and not just throw them into different styles. I am still going to be getting protective styles, but I will not be leaving them in for six weeks at a time and I won't be getting my hair done every month. Well, I'll do like every three months. I'll get my hair braided up or something. I'm going to be documenting my natural hair journey this time around. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite hair products are if you're natural or if you're not natural. Just let me know which products you love to put in your hair. Thank you so much for stopping in and checking out another one of my videos. I love you all. Bye.